Hello, hello. Hey there. Is this about time? No, I got time. 24-hour call. Uh, you got enough time for 73 questions. About that much, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. All okay. Right. So, what's your name? Miriam. And what's your specialty? Anesthesiology. And what year are you? I'm a PGY3 or clinical anesthesia year two. Where'd you go to undergrad? I'm Canadian, so I went to McMaster University. And medical school? Uh, Saiba University School of Medicine, very small island in the Dutch Caribbean. And where are you originally from? I'm Canadian, so I'm from a small town outside Toronto called Bowmanville. Wow, so <laughs> Canada to the Caribbean, now to the U.S., what mm -hmm. in the world got you to Augusta? Uh, I wanted to match to anesthesia, and it's pretty competitive, so this place had me, and I would, I would have them. Right. <laughs> yeah. Just out of curiosity, where are we going? Uh, well, since you've got some time, I thought I'd show you the ORs, give you a little sneak peek of what it's like to be Ooh, in anesthesia. The exclusive OR tour. Yes, all Love for it. you. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. now back to medical school. What was your favorite part of medical school? The people. You make lifelong friends in medical school. And what specialty did you think you were going to go into on the first day of med school? <laughs> I thought I was going to be psychiatry, like gung-ho. <laughs> what made you change your mind? Um, I figured out that I like reading about the subject, but I don't like practicing it, which is kind of an important part. Yeah. <laughs> well, you are here in anesthesia, so what yeah. made you first fall in love with anesthesiology? Oh gosh, it's, it's just real-time medicine. Um, all the interventions and uh, pharmacology that you're, you're putting in place into the patient, it's happening real-time and it's very engaging. That's awesome. Yeah. So for the people that may want to do this, how long does your training take after med school? It's a four-year residency. Do yeah. you plan to do a fellowship after? I do. I've applied to cardiothoracic fellowship, so wish me luck. Will do. Yeah. So for the people mm -hmm. that may not be familiar with anesthesia, what exactly is anesthesia? Oh gosh, so, I mean, anesthesia is inducing a coma-like state for patients so that they're able to tolerate uh, pain and procedures that they wouldn't normally be able to tolerate. There's a lot that goes into it, but that's kind of the, the basics of it. So, is that all you do? Absolutely not. <laughs> um, we have a lot of subdivisions of anesthesia that we can specialize in. You can do obstetrics, you can do pediatrics. Um, some people do chronic pain where they might be working more in a clinic scenario and some people might be working in uh, uh, ICU setting, which obviously is a big uh, place to be now that COVID's a thing in the world. Uh, yeah. So it sounds <laughs> like you do a ton. Yeah, we do. Explain to me kind of what happens on an average day for you. Yeah, so uh, I would get up in the morning and come through this little <laughs> passageway here to get to the ORs and set up for people. Um, what we do is that we induce patients under anesthesia. We secure their airway for breathing and, uh, or what have you. Um, during the case, we're responsible for making sure that the patient is uh, hemodynamically stable and basically uh, in that sweet spot that they're able to tolerate the procedure while being asleep. So what kind of procedures do you do? Oh, we do a lot. Um, we do epidurals, arterial lines, uh, central lines. We can do transesophageal echo. There's a lot that we do. Sounds like you do a ton, but what jobs yeah. do anesthesiologists usually end up with? Um, so you could work in the general OR, which is just sort of day-to-day -day cases down here. You could be someone that works in a uh, chronic pain clinic where you do um, management of patients with chronic pain problems. You could work in an ICU, uh, or you could just work within um, any kind of combination of those things, maybe in an outpatient center or here or what have you. Sounds fun and yeah. sounds like a lot of variety. Yeah. So what would you say is the most unique part of your specialty if you had to pick one? Yeah. Um, I'd say that we're master resuscitators. Um, we take people that are you know, on the brink of collapse, whether that's from hemodynamics, from cardiovascular collapse, sepsis, things like that, and intraoperatively, we keep them in equilibrium or keep them where they need to be. So what would be an example of that resuscitation? Uh, we once had a patient with uh, placenta accreta, which is basically that uh, the placenta is too attached to the, to the uterine wall. And she was bleeding so much that we ended up giving her 80 units, 80 <laughs> units Jeez. of uh, yeah, blood. And she made it. It took us two hours to get her stable, but we made it. Wow. Yeah. So car salesman time, you gotta sell your specialty. <laughs> Why should someone choose your specialty? Oh gosh, it's, it's real-time medicine. Like I said, it's very engaging and it's just the perfect mix of being able to work with your hands, but also being able to uh, you know, work with 
uh, your brain and being able to problem solve. And devil's advocate now, why should someone not choose your specialty? Oh goodness. Um, if you don't like to make real-time decisions, here, <laughs> um, you know, time is, time is going to make a difference, shoot, they're in that room, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Time is going to make a difference for, uh, you know, making these decisions for patients and being able to resuscitate. So, um, yeah. are there. so are there any stereotypes of your specialty? Yes. People think that we're lazy. They think they'll show us in cartoons and things like that being like the ones that fall asleep or are drunk in the middle of an operation. It's insane. Well, are the st stereotypes true? Absolutely not. We are some of the hardest working people I know. All right, now, mm -hmm. this is new, so where are we? Uh, we're next to the level one room. We always have an emergency room available um, that is at the drop of a hat ready for any type of emergency that comes in, a level one. So we just need to make sure that the room is prepped and ready. So what goes into prepping or checking a room? So you need to make sure that you have things like um, an airway, a, a cart that's filled with all the necessities so that basically as soon as we need to go, this room could be ready so that we could bring someone in and we can start doing our jobs. Uh, so this is kind of a trauma room. So what is the craziest case you've seen in the OR? Uh, oh, um, a little less than a year ago, we had a patient, she was pregnant with placenta uh, percreta. She had COVID pneumonia. She had sickle cell disease and was having acute cha acute pet chain, <laughs> acute chest pain crisis. Um, she left against medical advice, and when she came back five hours later, she was being coded and she was already uh, had a tube in her mouth. Ooh. Yeah. So are you ever nervous at all coming into your shifts? Uh, I used to be. <laughs> I think um, if I know that there's something going on, I'll kind of prep myself, but not so much nervous anymore. Okay. So how many patients do you see on an average day? Um, that could be anywhere from like one to 10, depending on what kind of cases you're doing. And what's the most amount of patients you've seen in a day? Ooh, uh, myself and another person hold the record for the most blocks in a day, which was 21. Congrats. <laughs> yeah. So how many procedures do you, do you do on an average day? Um, I'd say that's anywhere from like, let's say three to five. Um, just depends how many uh, IVs and things that you need to put in. Gotcha. All right, now for the fun, I guess, questions. How many hours do you work in an average week? <laughs> People are going to love this. Uh, anywhere from 40 to 80, life of a resident. So what time do you normally wake up? Um, not so bad. It's like 5 to 6. What time do you normally leave the hospital? Um, that can be anywhere from 3 to 7 p.m. Oof. Yeah. I'm not doing a good job selling this. <laughs> How many hours of sleep are you working on? I'm an old lady. I need eight. <laughs> How many hours of sleep are you working on right now? Um, I'm on a 24-hour call, so I've been doing naps. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah. So, do you have to take call at all? I guess that answers yes. the last question. Night float as well. Same type of thing. <laughs> are you a night shift or day shift kind of person? If I guess if you have a choice. Um, I think you learn the most on night shift. That's a good answer. Yeah. <laughs> How long does it take you to chart at the end of your day? Um, once you get in the swing of things as an anesthesia resident, you're doing things during your cases. So you shouldn't hopefully have anything at the end of the day. Sentimental question. Who are you most thankful for on your care team? Oh, goodness. Um, I think just like a, a play, there's dozens of people, you know, backstage that you don't know about. And every single person's vital to keep things going. So Great all answer. of them. <laughs> all right. A fun question. What is the funniest thing you've seen in a patient chart, you know, without <laughs> violating HIPAA, of course? Um, so we once had a cardiology note that said, uh, if any of us are alive in six months after this whole COVID thing, I'd like to see the patient back in my office. Real uh, note. <laughs> dark humor. Nice. Yeah. Uh, what is the most common medical advice you give to your patients? Uh, unfortunately, I have a lot of people that smoke on the day of surgery, and I have to educate a lot of people not to do that. So what is your favorite nerdy random medical fact? This question keeps, you know, catches a lot of people off guard. Oh gosh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I feel like I'm just hearing like internet jokes in my head, like the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. <laughs> That's, that is a great answer. I'm kidding. Okay. So I guess, you know, you said you guys are master resuscitators mm -hmm. and that means COVID definitely was probably impactful to the field. Right. Can you describe how COVID impacted the anesthesia field for you? Yeah, um, so normally we only have about five or six people in our entire 
uh, resident pool on uh, ICU at any given time. And when COVID really, uh, you know, became prevalent, we started opening a bunch of ICUs, even down here, what would be normally the pre-op area. And about half of our residents were staffing the ICU for months. Like that's like 24 people. So we were we were taking in a lot of that work. We were. Oh, we're incredibly thankful for you. And so now, let's switch it to be positive. Okay. You talked a lot about your life inside the hospital, how about your life when you clock out. So what is your favorite thing to do when you are not working? Uh, relax on my couch. <laughs> Does your family ever ask you for random medical advice? All the time. It's always like medications or, or just things they hear on TV. <laughs> What's the weirdest question a family or friend has ever asked you? My dad got a hold of an SpO2 monitor, and he always asks, he'll always tell me his SpO2s each day, and he's like, is that a problem? I don't know who gave him that advice. <laughs> I don't know. Most people don't know what an SpO2 is. I know. <laughs> who gave them that? <laughs> oh, yes. what's your favorite dish to eat? Ooh, who doesn't like a good lasagna? Good choice. Any favorite restaurants around here? Ooh, Fifth and Finch. It's my favorite. Coffee, tea, or soda? Tea. OK. Mm-hmm. All right, this is a funny question because I get a different answer from every doctor I talk to. How much water should you be drinking every day? Oh, gosh. Until you're not thirsty. I think that's how it works, <laughs> I think. Favorite meal from the ca hospital cafeteria, if Ooh, you have one? Potato day. Baked potatoes are great here. <laughs> Favorite healthy snack? Uh, a honey crisp apple. Favorite guilty snack? Ooh, mac and cheese. Good choice. Yeah. Controversial question. Pineapple and pizza, yes or no? I love it. Yes. Ooh, yikes. <laughs> Judge me. I love yep. it. <laughs> Apple or Android? Apple. Any artistic hobbies you keep up with? I like to sew. I made this scrub hat. <laughs> oh, very well done. How yeah. long have you been doing it? Um, like eight months. It's my COVID hobby. Nice. Yeah. Uh, what kind of music do you listen to in the OR? Oh, my God. Well, in the OR, we try to keep it good for everybody. I'd say, like, classic hits are a good one, you know? Okay. Yeah. Uh, top three favorite music artists? Ooh. Uh, I can tell you the genres I listen to are very different, like dance hall, classic rock, um, R&B, different stuff. <laughs> nice. Well rounded. Thank so you. What is the best way that you relax after a long day? Uh, dinner with friends is usually my favorite way. Good choice. Yeah. Night in or go out on the town kind of person? Night in. <laughs> Indoors or outdoors? Indoors. <laughs> Beach or mountains? Beach. Would you consider yourself more of an introvert or extrovert? Ooh, I'm actually more of an extrovert. Was that personality trait a factor in you choosing your specialty? Uh, you know, funny enough, uh, they say that most people are introverts going into anesthesia because you're kind of like working on your own, but um, I don't always find that that's the case, and it didn't deter me. Okay. Yeah. All right, so we're getting close to the end. Okay. okay. We yes. only got a few more questions left, but Let's these will this. be more kind of reflective, sentimental questions. Okay, I'm ready. You ready? <laughs> yeah. All righty. So what did you think you were going to be when you grew up as a kid? Ooh, for as long as I can remember, it's been doctor, you know, thanks to my parents. I'm just nice. kidding, but yeah. So is there a different specialty you think you could have done? Um, I am a people person, so I think I would have liked family medicine, but I think that could have drained me as well. But I'm happy where I am. Very happy. <laughs> so if you didn't do medicine, what do you think you'd be doing right now? Ooh, um, comedy writer. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, SNL or something. Were there any times you doubted you would make it as a doctor? This field is pretty rigorous. I think everybody has those feelings. Um, that certainly happened to me in intern year and even a couple times as the CA1. <clears throat> Whenever you're approached with something really new and difficult, I mean, I think it's a very natural thing to feel. Alrighty. Big question. If you could yeah. change one thing about the medical field right now, what would it be? I think preventative medicine is the key uh, component that is needed in this country. I think that would make a huge difference for how people are able to have a quality of life and, um, you know, be able to enjoy their lives more. So what can a medical student do right now to prepare to go into your specialty? Yeah, so I mean, try and get exposure because nobody knows what this is. Ask for a rotation early, just try and see it. Um, and then if you can, try and get involved in like, let's say research or just, you know, trying to get a feel for the vi or the, the field. Okay. Yeah. And finally, question 73. Didn't take too long to get here. Oh, nice. So <laughs> what would you say to the aspiring anesthesiologist right now? Wow. 
I'd say this is a hidden gem in medicine. It's absolutely wonderful. Um, if you have any interest in it, if you want to do it, I say go for it because it's so rewarding. All righty. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you, Miriam. That is all I have for you. Thank you. You look pretty busy, so I'm going <laughs> to let you get back to your 24-hour night call. Well, thank you. It's all about preparation. <laughs> Perfect. Bye.